I didn't realize that you don't have to have another language to train to be able to translate. Yeah. Then, you know, well, you have to have you some have books. Always books. You have to have, you have, to have a little bit of a basis. Yeah, you have to have yeah. patience and sit down and apply yourself. Yeah. yeah. Nothing is nothing is nothing is difficult. Nothing is un, un, unpassable. Nothing is some things may be highly improbable, but nothing is impossible. Yes. Yes, Have you had have you had your work translated into another language? Yes. I believe so. Right? Yeah. I have my work translated in six languages. Wow. Mm -hmm. they, they've been published in Greek, in Greece, here, yeah. in the United States, and England, in, 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 in English, in Romania, in Romania, wow. in uh, Austria, in German, my book, in German. Yeah, in, my book, Nostos and Argos, this one, has been translated in. It's published here, also in Greek, with the title Philoroes. Wow. Uh, in Romania, with the same title, mm -hmm. and Albus, because we both corresponded in Romania. Mm -hmm. And also in Hungary, with the, with, the, with the title Awareness. He took the title of the first book, of the first point of the book, called Awareness, and he used that title as the title of the book. Okay. Awareness is translated in Hungarian and published in Slovakia. And uh, also translated in Serbia, and it's coming out in Serbia in the next 20 days. Wow. And I also have my Umbermans in German, I yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. My book, Autumn Leaves, translated right now in Hungarian, it's coming out in Hungary in wow. February. Yeah. And my book, uh, Nostosialos, this one again, translated into Russian, it's coming out in Moscow sometime in summer, we expect. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. We're working with Italian translators, we're working with Turkish translators, we're working with a French translator as we speak. Do you speak any other languages? No, I don't. But my contact in Europe uh -huh. does all this work. Well. Yeah. I was wondering if you could if you knew like what they took what if they took any liberties with your work. Yeah, I know. Oh, I I, I, I relate. Know, right? No, I don't know 100 percent, but I relate to the editor who does only work. How is this one in comparison to this one? Oh, okay. And you rely on the person's work. That's all. Mm -hmm. How does every reader know the quality of my translation of his father's work? Mm -hmm. And when you're translating, do you prefer to read something the poem has already been translated first, and then do your version, or do you want to start fresh and not? Not necessarily. Else? I can do either, either. Way, either way. Yeah. Yeah. I compare my translation to other people's translations. And I, I translated before I saw other translations, and I translated after I saw other translations. Yes, yeah. I go in whichever way. Yeah. Uh, this particular one, the one I referred to here at the end, there isn't any other in North America. None, none at all. None at all. I don't know how many translations of this are in, in, in Europe, or perhaps in English in Europe, but none of them in North America. Limadits comes out in North America for the first time in this book. This is the next time. Gives me an extra satisfaction, that, you know, makes me feel mm -hmm. better that this poet comes out. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poet. It's the people's poet. Mm -hmm. It is a similarity between his life and Yanis Ritsos in, uh, in the way that they were both leftists. Mm -hmm. They wrote poetry for the cause of the left early in their lives. Mm -hmm. They were both incarcerated, in, in, were exiled for various, uh, for so certain period of time of their lives, away from their families, because of their beliefs, political beliefs. Uh, he, he made a turnaround from the politically oriented poetry to the deep in the soul of the human el uh, essence, poet, halfway through his life, but then he produced just a little and then he died, because he died a very young man. Mm -hmm. exactly the same way, he turned from the politically oriented poetry to the best poet he wrote with his famous book Moonlight Sonata in the 1960s. From there on he produced another 100 books, 80 books or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a certain similarity between the two. Do you have a favorite poem? Or a favorite poet? I love, I love these two. That's your favorite? These are the two I love. Oh. Yannis Richards and, and, and Limadidis. Your absolute favorite, okay. Awesome. I like all, all the others. I oh, like okay. the I like all of them. But my favorite ones is a matter. And this one in particular is the people's poem. Mm -hmm. Speaks of so many simple things that that really are dramatic every time, every day in our lives. He gives them that attention. Mm -hmm. 
And this way, this right. poetry comes out of things that are familiar, mm -hmm. things yeah. that you don't yeah. expect. And, and sometimes his poetry resonates with me because I grew up my yeah. all my early years yeah. in a very poor country yeah. under very difficult conditions, particularly after the war, the conditions in, in the village. And the kind of side, yeah. Yeah, these are images that I resonate with. And he speaks a lot of those as well. So this is why I learned. And so is Jan Ritter, but he knows a lot more. Yes, for me. I had um, experience translating prose, like fiction, and um, like not, I, I mean, I had translated poetry, but not mm -hmm. in any kind of more significant way. And um, my uh, prose translation was actually my own novel mm -hmm. from, a, uh, from English Punjabi. And um, what I found the most interesting thing, because it was my own work, so I could, you know, really take a lot of liberty from mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. English first? Yeah. And um, so it, it's, um, I felt that um, when I was translating it at places uh, where English manuscript was like a little, um, not totally clear, like mm -hmm. an image or something. Mm -hmm. When I actually translated it, and then I went back to the English, I could really actually improve it. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and from there I, I felt that um, it's very hard to translate a lie. Like if, uh, if, if, um, if an expression is, is not strong enough, it doesn't come out very clearly, it's very hard to translate it in another language. Mm -hmm. Unless you have to, like you have to, um, what Munori said as well about you know seeing certain things uh, in something and other people seeing something else in the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's a similar kind of a process, but I felt that it, it really helped me to uh, make my manuscript um, really, you know, like fine tune it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I've, yeah, I've heard that uh, maybe I should do that for each of my novels. Give it a test of life. Test of life. <coughs> you know, I found that uh, when, I go, when I go from one language to the other, and I edit, let's say I write something in Greek, and then I want to write it in English, and I look at the original, and I go like this, something else comes mm -hmm. into the English version that is not in the original, because mm -hmm. something flows out of you while you write. Mm -hmm. This is the process of Right, am I right? So I take this English version of that and I say, well, look at this. This is not the image, it's not here. So I go back and add that. Then the Greek mm -hmm. poem becomes better than it used to be to begin with. Mm -hmm. And by going back and forth like that a few times, finally I come to the point of saying, this is beautiful this way, and beautiful that way. And then I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I show it to two different people an English speaking publisher and a Greek speaking publisher. What do you like? Well, it looks great. Or it means this.